couple comments uh, on practices and then uh, take the questions and a reminder of the uh, thing that went out today again about the Hall of Fame, Aaron Murray and Boss Bailey being inducted this Saturday. All right, I just finished up. Had a good uh, Tuesday practice. Obviously a little bit ahead on some of the game planning from last week and uh, having a good jump start on a lot of our uh, situation football stuff. Thought the guys practiced good today and good energy. Uh, it's, it's easy to it's easy to motivate this week because they all want to play well and they're all practicing hard. Maybe just sitting is uncommon. Is we I, we haven't seen it before in media viewing period. Notice you had the scouts out there actually running the the tackling stuff instead of those guys working on tackling each other. How, how often do you guys do that? Is that a little bit more of a focus? No, we, we do it before you guys come out there every day. We do that. That just is a more of an emphasis of having extra guys. I mean, we, we end up hitting each other a lot. So instead of hitting each other, sometimes we bring scout guys down and let them get extra reps so that we get more guys practicing tackling. But we do that before y'all get there for four minutes where everybody gets to practice it. A couple of players uh, the other day said that, that you had discussed the stakes with them about the game. I don't know if you normally do that, but uh, uh, you know about what a game means or what it may mean to the division or whatever. Is that something that you guys are, are talking about? You always talk about the, also the next game is the most important one, obviously. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we don't really talk about the stakes of these games. I mean, when I talk to the team, I talk about every game is important. I mean, the last SEC game just as important as this SEC game. The next SEC game is just as important as this one. So we prepare for all the games the same because if you're not doing that, then it's kind of like, what are you saying to the players? So we are very consistent in our preparation and very consistent in our message that, uh, that whoever we play, it doesn't matter who we play, we got to go play our best game. We feel like we play our best game and we'll come out on top. Is there a benefit that last year's team went through the similar situation with Auburn? I know it's a different group. Every team's different. But yeah. the fact that your guys have been through this situation before, do you think they can draw from that and get confidence? Back? I don't know. I think last year's team's so different. I do think that you, there's people in this room, that in this room when we have a team meeting, that understand that. But we don't catastrophize anything. We look at it as an opportunity to get better. and. That's what they've done. They worked for, what, three, four, five, five or six practices to really get better and hone in at the things they can work on. How has uh, Felipe practice gotten better from, from as you watched him well, last year and as he's been able to progress and work more it? Yeah, I mean, I, he's a year older. Yeah. Right? First and foremost, he's a year older, so let's don't – jump off the rocket ship and think that he just, I mean, he, he got, you play in this league, you get better. You, you have to, you have no choice. All right, you play in front of an offensive line that was full of sophomores or maybe some freshmen and juniors. Now those those guys, I mean, we do a sheet, one of them has like 30 starts, 40 starts, 27 starts. I mean, they got guys that have started forever. So he's playing in front of a much more experienced offensive line that went through his trials and tribulations for a couple of years. And those guys are a lot more experienced now. So, but he is playing at a uh, a much higher level, and I think it's more because of his confidence. He has better wideouts. Um, Dan's done a great job developing him, and then he's got a really good offensive line in front of him. So, with, with all that thing, all those things considered, you get better in this league when you play. Kirby, we saw Dan Cleva out there. Um, how is he progressing? Um, is there a earliest timeline to get him back? It's the same as I told you guys the other day. He's not going to be able to play this game. Uh, getting better. Um, everything looks good um, in his healing process, and he's rehabbing. He's now weight bearing, obviously. He's out there and he's running and moving. Did Jacob Marfield affirm over the punter job? Is that something that maybe kind of up for grabs a little bit this week? Well, it's been up for grabs in the off week. We've had two guys competing. We had two guys competing today. We've, we've punted uh, both guys quite a bit, but Jake's still our punter right now. Who's in, who else is involved in that competition? Stratton. has been up there. What's the what's the rule for roster in a game like this? Is a neutral site game? Is it still seventy or is it? Yes, we, we abide by the seventy. Both teams use seventy. It's a it's a road game. Coach, it's it's easy for us to say that, uh, or anybody observing to say, uh, Elijah's averaging seven point five yards a carry. He needs to carry it more. But how much of that is maybe maybe you might do you need to get the ball to him more, or he is benefiting from you know what you're doing at that position, the substitution. Elijah does a great job. I mean, I think he's. Uh, one of the best running backs in our conference. He runs really hard. He's uh, he's tough to tackle. He's like that every day with our guys. Uh, I think the wear and tear is important because he's a you know, 205, 210 pound back, not a 225 pound back. So you have to be careful about the wear and tear. But I mean, 
a lot of guys, 200 pounds of carry to 20, 30 times a game, especially in yesteryear. But uh, we will do everything we can to get those backs the ball as much as possible. And he's a guy we want to carry the ball. Is it a is it a hot hand thing, or do you have set rotations? It, I know quarterbacks touchy feely, but what about running back? Is that a set rotation, or is that dependent on packages, or how do you? No, it's not. It's really based on carries. We try to get three to four carries for a guy, and then a lot of times they get winded. And if we don't have a lot of times they get three or four carries in one drive. I can think of, you know, maybe Brian Heron against Tennessee once, and maybe Holyfield and DeAndre each once, where we like to sub those guys. You want fresh backs in there. And, if you feel like those guys are equivalent to running the ball and they all going to read the same things, then you want to have them in the game and you want to get those guys touches. And our backs do a great job. But some of the looks we get from defenses sometimes don't make it easy to sit there and keep handing it off over and over when you get some looks outside for some guys that we think can win one-on-one -on -one matchups. Obviously, we've got to do what is successful. Mm -hmm. Whatever that success is, if that's carrying it into a loaded box, if that's throwing it into a non-loaded box, we just got to be successful. And looking at the backs on the other side, obviously, kind of similar to what you guys do, they rotate out yeah. a lot. But LSU had some success with that. What kind of challenges do those guys present? Present, sorry, and what you got to do to kind of counterattack those guys? Yeah, you, you got to strike blockers up front. You got to build a wall. You got to tackle well. I mean. Every team in our league has multiple backs, mm -hmm. so they're going to have fresh backs. Um, we play usually a lot of D linemen when we have a lot of D linemen, and we play a lot of backers. We feel like a guy tackles fresher than a guy that's worn out having to hit the same guy over and over. That's why they substitute backs. So that's why we try to substitute D line and, and linebackers when we can. But that's all based predicated on your depth and how good your players are. We've uh, we played a lot of players up to this point, and uh, we we'll continue to do that if it helps us. If we got a guy that's playing really well, then we're probably not going to do that defensively. Yeah, the depth on the D-line, um, I think Jonathan was talking yesterday about, I guess it was 83 snaps it ended up being. Um, do you feel good about how much you uh, rotated there? Uh, was it, it, it ch is it chicken versus the egg? It was in getting too many snaps. You're talking about the last game? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, we keep talking about the last game. I mean, but to be honest with you, we didn't have a lot of guys that could substitute in. It was harder because we had David Marshall out, we had Devontae out. Had a lot of guys out. We subbed a ton of guys in that game. But to be honest, Devontae being back helps us because it gives us a 300 pound body. So when you're subbing out guys that are 270, 260, and they're playing on 310 pound people, you know, you, you sometimes get worn out. I mean, all offense tends to do it to people. So having another big body back is a big help for us. Uh, Jordan's development has been a big bonus for us. Because you, you go back to that game and, and he played, he played well. He, he held up on blocks. So we just need more guys to play that got big bodies and build the wall that we want to build and not let backs through there. Talk about Jordan. Go ahead. No, I think I was going to talk about Jordan. I think last two games, he's had probably like 30 snaps in each one. How has he been able to maintain his uh, conditioning? Oh, he that? may be one of our best conditioned players now. Cause he spends all his time conditioning. Yeah. I mean, so the big goal for him was all along. It makes me wonder, shouldn't every guy be doing what he's doing? Because he, he, he doesn't play a lot on third down, but he plays really hard when he's in. He's able to sustain better. Well, he runs a lot of time on his own. He'll come in the morning run. He runs Monday, Tuesday, and he still has practice. Mm -hmm. So he does a lot of that on his own because he's trying to maintain his weight. Um, but he's held up well in the two games he's done. It's been cooler in both games. As you uh, think about your linebacker group, and you say it's a by committee unit. I mean, um, how do you kind of challenge those guys? I guess even though you have guys that can rotate multiple guys out there, how do you challenge one of them to step up? Even though you don't have that stand out like a work on Smith. Or well, we have a, we have leaders in that group. I mean, Natrez and Juwan both do a good job leading. But the challenge comes when you're not out there with the ones and thirty two and whoever. Uh, doesn't matter who, 30 year out there, then, then, then the other guy wants to be out there and they want to go play. And I think they, they understand that the guys that practice best and have the best work weeks will play. And that's really the way it is at all our positions, guys. I mean, there's, there's changes in rotations we use out there all the time. And we certainly are looking for the right matchup. You think you would have it by now, but we haven't played to the level that we expect to defensively, and we've got to tackle better. So if that means changing things and changing people out, we're willing to do whatever it takes. And those guys compete really hard on the defensive linebacker spots to get those spots. It oh. seems that Jake's calling card with this team has been his confidence from the get-go. You mentioned it. He just kind of came in confident in himself and, and doing those things. And then 
I don't think we've necessarily seen him play like he played against LSU and then also kind of down like he was after that game. What's has been his response this last week and a half? Oh, he's been great. He, he was super out there last week, spirited. Uh, there was a lot of competition. We tried to make competition between the offense and defense. And, uh, he challenged guys and, and made some plays uh, with the wideouts and with the back. So, I mean, it, it, not, Jake's not the kind of guy that backs down from, from competition. I mean, he's not going to do that. He's not going to say, well, I didn't play my best game and go into a shell. I mean, he's, he's out there working every day. How is Justin along those same kind of lines? I mean, you know, pushing himself and, and trying to do – yeah, he's doing him. a great job. He's, he's competing every day, doing a good job, throwing good balls. I mean, he's developing. He's come a long way from the first of the season to now to what it's reading coverages, protections. I mean, he's, he's done a really good job of picking things up in this offense. And I think that says volumes about his work ethic and where he is. But making those reads kind of the furthest, we talk about furthest coming along the first that one of the areas uh, where you well, all, areas. all areas. I think calling the play in the huddle from when he got here to now, he's so much further along doing that. I think seeing Jake do it and watch Jake manage it and see Jake do things, he's learned from that. He's very bright. Kirby, I'm not sure how many of you snaps defensively Eric Stokes has gotten since the Missouri game. How has he progressed in practice? He's been good. Um, he does a good job uh, competing. He plays really well on special teams. and. He's a guy all the time that we're challenging uh, Tyson with, obviously. But um, Tyson's done some good things in practice. He covers good people. And it doesn't matter who's out there. They're going to get throws at that spot. So uh, we know that that's a, that's a spot that's going to get more throws than the other side, probably. So we have to help those guys out. If we thought he was playing better, he'd be in there. Notice when, when they were, you guys were doing that tackling drill, you were kind of praising, uh, uh, I believe it was Otis Reese. And, and Mark Webb said talking about how you know them being big hitters and stuff. What you know, since they've got that physicality part going for them, what what's kind of in their way from from maybe playing a bigger role in the defense? In the well, they play, Mark Webb plays a bigger role. He plays on almost every third down. Uh, Oz hasn't cracked that that part yet, but he's he's becoming trustworthy, learning. Look, when you come in here as a freshman, it's really hard just to walk in the door and just you know take your stars and run out there. You just, you show me across the country how many guys are just starting playing every snap. It's just not real often. I know everybody wants to believe it. Everybody loves these guys, but they, they're getting better. And as they get better, our team gets better. And I've watched a kid, George Davis, go all these reps on the scout team, and now he's actually capable of helping us. And I never would have thought that in fall camp. I thought the guy was a year away, and he sped his process up because he didn't really worry about where he was or, or playing. And when you get caught up in that as a recruiter player, it just drives you crazy. And a lot of it's created by the limelight and the aura we give them. We have to take them in, teach them how to play football, teach them that this game, the speed of this game is faster. And Otis is doing a really good job. He's going to be a good football player here. When? It could be this week. It could be next week. It could be next year. I don't know. But he's getting better. Last how, question. How much of that limelight and that aura you're talking about right there kind of has to come from you guys because you're competing with another school that's showering all this love on this kid. Yeah. And then that, how, how much of that, that we to... don't shine that right, right. But I'm a realist in recruiting. When, I, when they come in recruiting, I say, look, you're going to have to work really hard. You're going to have to commit to being at the University of Georgia. you got to get better. you got to learn our system. Now, how many of them actually believe that? They think it's easier than it is. If you go ask every freshman out there, they'll say, I had no idea how tough it was going to be. But – a lot of pushing through and a lot of them helping out, out there. And they're going to be good football players, and those kids are buying in. Thanks, guys.